Hello, everyone, and welcome back to theCUBE, where we are streaming live this week from KubeCon. I am Savannah Peterson, and I am joined by an absolutely stellar lineup of CUBE brilliance this afternoon. To my left, a familiar face, Lisa Martin. Lisa, how are you feeling end of day two? Excellent, it was so much fun today. The buzz started yesterday, the momentum, the swell, and we only heard even more greatness today. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I sometimes think we'd hit an energy cliff, but it feels like the energy is just continuing well, to gonna, build. I think we're going to slide right into tomorrow. Yeah, me too, I love it. And we've got two fantastic analysts with us today, Sarbjeet and Keith. Thank you both for joining us. We feel so lucky today. Great Thanks. being back on. Thanks for having us. Yeah, yeah, it's nice to have you back on the show. We were had you yesterday, but I miss hosting with you. It's been a while. It has been a while. We yeah. haven't done anything in, uh, since, since Pre-pandemic, right? Yeah, I think you're the right. Before times. The yeah. before times. Back in the yeah. day. We, I always enjoy whole thing with Lisa because she's so well prepared. <laughs> I don't have to do any research when I come <laughs> on. Lisa will bring up some, oh, sorry, Jeep, I see that uh, in 2008 you won this award yeah. for <laughs> being just excellent. And I, I'm like, oh, yeah, good, yeah. Okay. All right, Keith, so. So did you do his analysis? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all done. Yeah, great. He, the only part is he's not sitting next to me, so we can't see it. <laughs> so it's going to be like a, a magic crystal right. ball. So uh, a lot of people here, you got some stats in terms of the attendees compared to last yeah, year. Yeah, Priyanka told us we were double last year, up to 8,000. We also got the scoop earlier that 2023 is going to be in Chicago, which is very exciting. Oh, that is nice. Yeah, we got to break that here. Excellent. Keith, talk to us about what some of the things are that you've seen the last couple of days, the momentum, what's the vibe? I saw your tweet about the top three things you're being asked. Kubernetes was not one of them. Kubernetes was, <laughs> was not one of them. This conference is starting to, it, it still feels very different than a vendor conference. Yeah. The keynote is kind of, you know, kind of all over the place talking about projects. But the hallway track has been, you know, I've, I've, this is maybe my fifth or sixth KubeCon in person, and the hallway track is different. It's less about projects and more about how do we adjust to the enterprise? How do we yes. actually do enterprise things? And it has been amazing watching this community grow. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say grow up. And, Mature, uh, yes. You know, you know, they're not wearing ties yet, but they are definitely <laughs> understanding kind of the, the friction of implementing new technology in an, in an enterprise. Yeah. So, G, what's your what's been your take? We were with you yesterday, what's been the take today, the takeaways? <laughs> Not much has changed since yesterday, but a few things I think I, I missed uh, talking about the, that yesterday were that, first of all, like, let's talk about Amazon. Amazon earnings came out, it spooked the market, and I think, um, it's relevant in this context as well because they are number one cloud provider yeah. and all, I mean, almost all of these technologies are on the back of us here, they are um, uh, related to cloud, right? So it will have some impact on these. Like if you, we have to analyze that, like will it make the open source go faster or slower in, in lieu of the fact that the, the cloud growth is slowing, right? So that's that's one thing, let's, let's, put, let's put that aside. I've been thinking about the, the future of Kubernetes. What is the future of Kubernetes? And in that context, I was thinking like, you know, I, I think in, when I put a pointer there and I think in tangents, like what else is around this thing? So I think CNC, CNCF has been riding the success of Kubernetes. They are, that was their number one flagship project, if you will. And it was mature enough to stand on its own. It, it was, Google, it's Google's Borg, dubbed as Kubernetes. It's a genericized version mm -hmm. of that, right? So folks who do te tech deep down, they know that, right? So I think it's easier to stand with a solid you know, project, but when the newer projects come in, then your metal will get tested at CNCF, right? And so CNCF, I mean, they've got over 140 projects yeah. yes. right now, so there's definitely much beyond Kubernetes. Yeah, so they, I haven't seen numbers, 18 graduated, right? 37 in incubation, and then 81 in sandbox uh, stage. They have three stages, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, they have a lot to chew on, and the more they take on, the less, you know, quality get goes into it, who is, who's uh, putting the money behind it, which vendors are sponsoring 
like CNCF, like how they are getting funded up. I think it something it, I pay attention to as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah, at least I know you've got some insights. Those are I, the things I was thinking about today. I got to ask you, what's your take on what Keith said? Are you also seeing the maturation of the enterprise here at, at Coupon? Yes, I am actually. Um, when you say enterprise versus what's the other side? Startups, right? Yeah. So startups start using open source a lot more earlier or a lot more than enterprises. The enterprises, what they need, number one thing is the for their production workloads, they want a vendor supporting them. Um, I said that yesterday as well, right? So, it depend, depending on the size of the enterprise, if you're a big shop, definitely if you have one of the 500, or Fortune 500s, and you're a tech savvy shop, then you can absorb the open source directly coming from the open source sort of universe, right? Coming to you. But if you are the second tier of enterprise, you want to go to a provider, which is managed service provider, or it can be cloud service provider in this case. Yep. Most of the cloud service providers have multiple versions of Kubernetes, for example. I'm not talking about Kubernetes only, but we, like, but that is one example, right? So at Amazon, you can get five different flavors of Kubernetes, right? Fully managed, half managed, all kind of stuff. So people don't have bandwidth to manage that stuff locally. You have to patch it, you have to roll in the new you know, updates and all that stuff. Like, it's a lot of work yeah. for many. So CNCF actually is formed for that reason. Like the, the charter is to bring the quality to open source. Uh, like in other companies, they have the release process and their, their stringent guidelines and QA and all that stuff. So is, is something ready for production? That's the question when it comes to any software, right? So they do that kind of work and, and, and they have these buckets defined at high level, but it needs more work. Yeah, so yeah. one of the things that you know kind of stood out to me, I have a good friend in the community, Alex Ellis, who does OpenFast. It's a serverless platform, great platform. Uh, two years ago, or in 2019, there was a serverless day. And in serverless day, you had Knative, you had OpenPass, you had WISP, which is supported by IBM. Completely not CNCF platforms. Knative came into the CNCF fold when Google donated the project a few months ago, or a couple of years ago. Now, all of a sudden, there's a Knative day. Yeah. <laughs> not a serverless day, it's a Knative day. And I asked the, the uh, CNCF, event folks, like, what happened to serverless day? I missed having open FAS at serverless day. And, you know, they, they came out and said, you know what, Knative got big enough, they came in, and uh, I think Red Hat and Google wanted to sponsor a Knative day, so serverless day went away. So I think what, what I'm interested in over the next couple of years is, is there going to be pushback from the CN, uh, against the CNCF? Is the CNCF now too big? Is it now the gatekeeper for, do I have to be one of those 147 projects right. in order enough to get my project noticed? The OpenFast, great project. I don't think Al, uh, Alex has any desire to have his project hosted by uh, CNCF, but it de probably deserves you know, shoulder length recognition with that. So I'm pushing to have to say, okay, if this is open community, this is open source, if CNCF is the place to have the cloud native conversation, what about the projects that's not CNCF? Like how do we have that conversation when we don't have the power of a Google right. or, a, or a Linux, et cetera, or a Linux foundation? So G, what, what are your thoughts on that? Is, is CNCF too big? I don't think it's too big. I think it's too small to handle the, what we are doing in open source, right? So it's a bottle. It can become a bottleneck. Okay. I think uh, too big in a way that yeah, it has it has it has power. From that point of view, it has that cloud, if you will, that people listen to it. If it's CNCF project, oh, it, this must be good. It's like in in incubators, like if you have Y 
Y Combinator, you know, company, mm -hmm. it must be good, you know, <laughs> it may not be true. Uh, but I think there's a bold assumption there, though. I mean, I think everyone's just trying to do the best they can. And when we're evaluating projects of very different origin and background, it's incredibly hard. CNCF very. is a staff of 30 people. They've got 180,000 people that are contributing to these projects and 1,000 maintainers that they're trying to uphold. I think the challenge is actually really great. And to me, I actually look at events as an illustration of, you know, what's the culture and the health of an organization. If I were to evaluate CNCF based on that, I'd say, we're very healthy right now. I would say that we're in a good spot. There's a lot of momentum. Yeah, I, I think CNCF is very healthy. I'm, I'm appreciative for it being here. I love KubeCon. It's becoming the de facto conference to have this conversation. It's a needs, totally different vibe. To it is a others. totally different vibe. Yeah. There needs to be a conduit. And truth be told, enterprise buyers, to Sarbjeet's point, this is something that we do absolutely agree on, Enterprise buyers, we want someone to pick winners and losers. We do. We, we don't want a box of Lego dumped on our, the middle of our table. We want somebody to have sorted that out. So while there may be five or six different uh, service mesh solutions, at least the CNCF, I can go there and say, oh, I'll pick between the three or four that are most popular and it's, it's a place to curate. But I think with that curation comes the other side of it, of how do we, how, you know, without the big corporate sponsor, how do I get my project pushed up? Right, to elevated. Elevated yep. and, and put onto the show floor. You right. know, another way that projects get noticed is that startups will adopt them, push them, they may not even be, I don't, my CNCF project may not, my product may not even be based on the CNCF product, but the new stack has a booth, the Ford has a booth. Nothing to do with an individual product, but promoting open source. What happens when you're not sponsored? I got to ask you guys, what do you disagree on? Oh, so what, what do we disagree <laughs> on? So I'm of the oh, no. mindset, I, I, can, I can say this, I, I believe hybrid infrastructure is the future of IT, bar none. If I built my infrastructure, if I built my application in the cloud 10 years ago, and I'm still building that new applications, I have stuff that I built 10 years ago that looks a lot like on-prem. What do I do with it? I can't modernize it because I don't have the developers to do it. I need to stick that somewhere, and where I'm going to stick that at is probably a hybrid infrastructure. So Colo, I'm not going to go back to the data center, but I'm, I'm going to look, pick up something that looks very much like the data center, and I'm saying embrace that. It's the future, and if you're Boeing and you have, and Boeing uh, is a member of CNCF, uh, that's a whole nother topic. If you have AS400s, HPUX, et cetera, stick that stuff in the colo, build new stuff, but, uh, and, and continue to support OpenStack, et cetera, et cetera, because that's the future. Hybrid is the future. And sub G? Agree? Disagree? I okay. On Ish. Hi, hybrid, nobody can deny that the hybrid is the reality, not the future. It's a reality right now. It's it's a necessity right now. You can't do without it, right? And okay, hybrid is a very relative term. You can be like 10% here, 90% still hybrid, right? So the data center is shrinking and it will keep shrinking, right? And it, so, wait, hold. It, where's, is the data center shrinking? This no, is where on, we, on, we, on. quick one quick engine <laughs> oh, no, Get it, guys. Let's the we are cloud is it. growing by a clip. Yeah, but there is no data supporting. Uh, David Litchum just came out with a report, I think, uh, last year that showed that the data center is holding steady, holding steady, not growing, but not shrinking. Who sponsored that study? Okay, hold on. So the that's a question, right? So more than one million data centers have been closed. I have, I can dig that through number through somebody, like some organization we published that, maybe they're cloud, you know, people only. So the, the, when you get these kind of statements, like it, it can be very skewed statements, right? But if you have seen the, the scene out there, which you have, I know, but I have also seen a lot of data centers walk the floor of, you know, 100,000 servers in a data center. I cannot imagine us consuming the infrastructure the way we were going into the future. Of course, okay, with, with, with one caveat. Actually, I'm not a big fan of like broad strokes, like uh, make a blanket statement, oh no, data center's dead, or if you are... That's how you get those zesty headlines. Yeah, though. yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. But, I'm all uh, about the zesty yeah, headlines. Put a stake in the ground, you know? <laughs> the, 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 actually, the... the 
I think that you get more intelligence from the nuance, right? The smaller little details, if you will. If you're Goldman uh, Gold, Gold Sachs or Bank of America, you have so many data centers and you will still have data centers because performance matters to you, right? Your late latency matters for applications. But if you are, even a Fortune 500 company on the lower end and or in a healthcare vertical, right? That, your situation is different. If you are a high, you know, growth startup, your situation is different, right? You will be 100% cloud. So, cloud gives you velocity, the, the, the pace of change, the pace of experimentation, um, that actually you're buying innovation through cloud. It's proxy for innovation, and that's how I see it. But if you have, if you're stuck with older applications, I totally understand. Yeah, so you, the, you need that on-prem. Yeah. Well, I sometime. think the the bring and fuel circle. What we agree is that Long cloud is the place where innovation happens. Okay. At some point, innovation becomes legacy debt, Operations. and you have thus hybrid. You are not going to keep your old applications up to date forever. The, the, the math just doesn't add up. And where I differ in opinion is that not everyone needs innovation to keep moving. They need innovation for a period of time and then they need steady state. So, Sarbjeet, no, we're going to argue about this. I have gone to. I, have I love gone. this debate, yeah. though. Yeah, it's, it's efficiency and stability also plays an important role. I Absolutely. see exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. No, it's great. No, I have a counter to that, let me tell you. Why? Let's hear it. Because if you look at the storage only, right? Just, store, just take storage, forget about computer and network for, for a minute. There are three constructs in, in infrastructure, right? So storage, early, early on there was one tier of storage, you say pay the same price. Then now you, there are like five storage tiers, right? What I'm trying to say is the market sets the price, the market will tell you where this whole thing will go. But I know that mar margins are high in cloud, 20 plus percent. And margin will shrink as, as we go forward. That means the, the cloud will become cheaper relative to on-prem. It, it, in some cases, it's already cheaper, but even if it's a stable workload, even in that case, we will have a lower tier of service. I mean, you, you can't argue with me that the cloud versus your data center they are on the same tier of services. Like cloud is a better, you know, product than your data center, hands down. I love it. We we are gonna relish God, in the debates so between the two of you. The energy is more. great. I love it. Perspective. <laughs> it's not like any of us can quite see through the crystal ball. Though we have very informed opinions, which is super exciting. Yeah. Lisa, any last thoughts today? Just um, love. I love the debate as well. That and that's that's part of what being in this community is all about. So it's sharing, yeah. it's, it's about sharing opinions, expressing opinions. That's how it grows. That's how that's how we innovate. Yeah. Obviously, we need the cloud, but that's how we innovate. That's how we grow. Yeah. And we've seen that demonstrated the last couple of days. And I and your your takes here on the cube and on Twitter, brilliant. I absolutely love it. I'm going to close us out with a really important analysis on the swag of the show. Yes. As you know, yesterday we were looking at what is the weirdest swag or most unique swag. We had that bucket hat that took the grand prize. Today we're going to focus on something that's actually quite cool. A lot of the vendors here have really dedicated their swag to being local, to Detroit, very specific in their sourcing. Sonatype here has koozies. They're beautiful. You can't quite feel this flannel, but it's very legit. Hand sewn here in Michigan. I can't say that I've been to too many conferences, if any, where there was this kind of commitment to localizing and sourcing swag from around the corner. We also see this with the Intel booth. They've got screen printers out here doing custom hoodies on the spot. Oh, They're even fun. like appropriately sized. They had local artists do these designs. And if you're like me and you care about what's on your wrist, you're familiar with Shinola. This is one of my favorite swags that's available. There is a contest Ooh, going contest. on Hello. here. Yeah, so if you are at <laughs> KubeCon, good. make sure that you go and check this out. The we I talked about this on the show. We've had the founder on the show, or the CEO, and uh, yeah, I mean, Shinola is just full of class. As uh, Since we are in Detroit as well, one of the fun themes is cars. Yes. And Stormforge, uh, who are also on the show, is actually giving away an Aston Martin, which is very exciting, not exactly manufactured in Detroit. However, still very cool on the car front. And the 007 version, the best I know. from the 60s. It's, it's, Love it. It's very cool. Uh, 
two quick last things. We talk about it a lot on the show. Every company now wants to be a software company. Yep. On that vein and keeping up with my hat theme, the Home Depot is here because they want everybody to know that they, in fact, are a technology company, which is very cool. They have <laughs> over 500,000 employees. You can imagine there's a lot of technology that has to go into keeping Absolutely. that up. Yep. Wild to think about. And then last but not least, very quick, rapid fire, best t-shirt contest. If you've ever been to one of these events, there are a ton of t-shirts out there. I rate them on two things, wittiest line and softness. If you combine the two, you'll really be our grand champion for the year. I'm just going to hold these up and set them down for your laughs. Not afraid to commit, <laughs> which is pretty great. This is another one designed by locals here. Detroit Code City. Good oh, vibes. Love it. This one made me chuckle the most. Kiss my cash. Oh, that's good. These are also really nice and soft, which is fantastic. Also high on the uh, softness category is this Opsera one. I also like their bird logo. These guys, there's just, yeah, just, just real nice touch. So unfortunately, if you have the FOMO, you're not here with us live in Detroit, at least you're getting a taste of the swag, <laughs> a taste of the stories, and some smiles here from those of us on theCUBE. Thank you both so much for being here with us. Lisa, thanks for another fabulous day. Got it, girl. My name's Savannah Peterson. Thank you for joining us from Detroit. We're theCUBE, and we can't wait to see you tomorrow.